Ex-Minister Akpabio heads to Supreme Court after appeal court sacked him as APC senatorial candidate. And food energy prices worsen and inflation is on the rise for households even as electioneering dominates the national discourse. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakon. Vice Chairman of the All Progressive Congress, APC's Campaign Council, Senator Goswe Loboda Kwabio, has said that he would approach the highest court in the land to seek redress on the appeal court's judgment, nullifying his nomination as the APC candidate for Akwaibom, Northwest Senatorial District. The court had ruled that Akwabio, being a presidential aspirant of the APC, could not participate in the valid primary of the party held on May 27 and monitored by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, that produced Udum Ikbudum as a candidate. The court ordered INEC to remove Akwabio's name from the list of senatorial candidates in Akwaibom state contesting for the 2023 general elections. On Tuesday, Senator Goswil Akwabio said his lawyers were studying the appeal court's judgment sacking him as a senatorial candidate of the All Progressive Congress. And joining us to discuss this is Oponabo Inko Tare. He's a civil rights advocate and Ezekiel Nyaito, who's the governorship candidate of the ADC in Akwaibom State. It's good to have you gentlemen join us this evening. Yeah, Great. I'll start with you, Mr. Nyeto, because you're an Akwaibomite. And, of course, you are running mm -hmm. for a position of governor. And you, we all have watched the drama that has happened with the placeholder situation, which has not just been in the case of Goswil Akwabi, and we've seen it happen for other people, including the Senate president. And here we are um, again uh, talking about Goswil Akwabi. Let's start by um, looking at the comments that he made, um, saying that he might have to go to a superior court to um, deal with the issue. And he's saying that he's studying carefully uh, what the appeal court has said. Yeah, there are several sides of this coin. The very first side is that um, Mr. Akwabi is an ex extremely um, informed person and um, he's a lawyer by training let's not forget that and um, he's been a governor two terms he's been a senator he's been a minister so he is by any stretch of imagination informed and um, but I think that there's a catch somewhere and that catch is that um, a lot of people have really not come to terms with the realities of the 2022 Electoral Act as amended. As a result, many things will have to be tested out in the, the court, you know, at the legal level. So I think that what he's decided to do is within, well within his fundamental um, human rights. He has every right um, of appeal. And um, I think it will be a process of testing the waters to see exactly what is there in the 2022 Electoral Act as concerning who is eligible to contest. You know, it sharply contrasts with what has been in the past where the parties really just did anything they wanted. The, 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 the current act, you know, tries to sanitize the system. But you see, we are still um, trying to find out what really is and what really isn't. But as to his decision to approach the higher court, I think it's definitely his fundamental right to so do. Uh, I, that's my position. I, I have my personal uh, feelings about the whole thing because uh, being from Eco Independent Senatorial District and understanding how the Senate works, a man like Akwabio, in my personal opinion, I've, I've always said that me and him, we are like Tom and Jerry, we fight a lot. But um, you can't take it from him that he is one person that he gets into the Senate today, he creates impact because he is just an impact. I mean, he is just a body of, 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 of vibrancy, so to speak. But then everything must be done within the ambit of the law. So let, let, let him try it out. I think it's a good thing for him to do. Um, Open up, well, let's go to the basis again. Um, how all of this started? 
Um, as much as you know, the court is there and these laws are there for us to test <coughs> them, um, what, the, the fact that political parties, especially the APC uh, and some of their office holders, in the first place decided to go through the route of this placeholder situation, shouldn't we be questioning that in the first instance? Or are we just letting it slide because you know what, these things come and go and what's most important is who wins or who emerges at the end of the day? I think that you're muted. Okay, um, I don't think that um, we can hear you, Mr. Tyra, so we'll go back to um, Nyatuk. Now, Mr. Nyatuk, I want to, you, you raised some points and I, I, I noted it down. I wanted to take you, you know, take you on there. I can hear you now. Right. Okay, you now. open up. All right, go ahead. If you heard my question, um, just go yes, ahead. I do. Okay, uh, first and foremost, um, if I have to. First of all, uh, the, uh, speak on what my brother talked about, the reaching our jurisprudence. Well, that's okay, no problem about that. It's also within his right to also go to Supreme Court. That's to uh, reach our jurisprudence. But that doesn't uh, betray the fact that um, there is a violation and a fraction of the electoral act. And I think what the Court of Appeal did was just the dispensation of sagacity. It was clear. There is, in the law, there is no provision for placeholder or whatever name they call it. There's no such provision. And the law is quite clear. It's lucid. You know, as that you can't buy two forms for the same election. You can't contest for two different offices simultaneously. It is prohibited in our new electoral act. And I'm going to accept you. Yes, he's a lawyer. And I'm also surprised. I think he just wanted to take chances. It's as simple as that. Because he's a lawyer and he sees of the facts. He sees of the provisions of the electoral act. And he knows that what he's doing is legally wrong, completely illegal. He can't do that. What I think he's trying to do is bring his gravitas to bear, his weight to bear. The senior president tried it and it didn't work. They almost, I met almost to a very large extent, uh, recognized the senior president until I think the man, the challenger, went to court. And there was so much hue and cry about it. And I think that was why they had to delete his name. He did it. Uh, Devil May did the same thing as well. But in the case of Akpabi, Akpabi, who is a lawyer, knows too well that what he tried to do was an infraction. And what the Court of Appeal did is Go, right, that is the law. In fact, they interpreted the law stricto sensu. You cannot have two forms. The Electoral Act has prohibited that. You cannot contest. He bought the form for the presidential election, even if he withdrew. That is not an excuse. That was not a significant circumstance. There was no provision for that. So, whether he withdrew or not, he bought that form. And again, the issue of the form for the senatorial candidate, I think the senatorial, yeah, for the senatorial uh, uh, candidacy. Was even uh, the Trinidad campaign was even conducted before the presidential primary. So, how? If we do on the day of the presidential primary, they had already conducted it. So, at that point, and INEC itself, because the law also said INEC shall, INEC itself did not monitor that particular election, the uh, primary at Fabio. But, is, but, is but, but it's about. on record that <laughs> INEC, so that INEC did monitor the elections. It was done under the and, purview. But, but Mike Gini, I listened to Mike Gini. He said no. And the, the, the controversy was that the one said I they invited INEC, INEC refused to come. The other was, I might even say no. So which one are we going to accept? But whichever case, he brought the senatorial form. The uh, primaries were conducted before the presidential primaries were conducted. So how could he have purchased two forms in the same election? When I listen, I'm talking about the same electoral system, election system. How could he have done that? And this is, this is clearly prohibited in the new electoral act. So I think what the Supreme Court did was just uh, is to interpret the electoral act the way it takes, crypto sensu. And even if he goes to the Supreme Court, which is within his right to so no problem. It will enrich our jurisprudence. Let us see if the Supreme Court will give a different interpretation to it. And whatever the Supreme Court says it is, is what it is. That's the truth about it. Because that's the final court. So whatever the Supreme Court says, any interpretation of the Supreme Court adduces is that that is what the law is. So let us go, because that will also be a precedent 
so that for further in future, we are not going to have all these kind of controversies and complications anymore. Okay. Back to you, um, Mr. Nyaito. You did talk about the fact that Akpabio is a very uh, impactful senator, and you talked about the fact that he's made a lot of impacts. And, and, and since you are from Mikorik Bene, um, kindly um, educate us on how many bills that he has pushed for and how impactful his senatorial uh, candidacy or, or his office holding has been to the people of Ikorik Bene. Uh, I'm not in any way trying to say that you campaign for him, but since you are making a case for him, how impactful has he been as a senator? You know, it, 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 it's actually quite um, curious that I would be seen to be um, talking for, for a him. PDP guy, yeah. uh, an APC man. <laughs> for two reasons. One, we belong to two different parties. And secondly, on a personality basis, him and I, we are like Tom and Jerry. I keep saying that while he was in government, you know, we like, we have so many areas we don't agree, but we are friends and you really can't tell whether we are friends or enemies or things like that. But you see, there's a way that Nigeria operates. You know, whether you like it or not, Akpabio has gotten himself into the power equation of the Nigeria state. He came in as a first-time senator and guess what he was? He was a ranking member of the Senate. First time. That's called power. That's called influence. And within the Senate, there is the lawmaking and there's the representation. Okay? So he might not like um, bring up so many bills, but in terms of representation, he has this courage, this personality that he brings to bear wherever he is. Because I can tell you, look, he went into APC and today, take it or leave it, he's one of the most influential persons in the APC that he just crossed into. Within days, he was going around hobnobbing with Mr. President. I don't know how he does it, but he just has his way. So within that context, it's not so much, in fact, it's not so much how much bills that you present, which is important which is important, which is very important, but the politics of the Senate, the politics of the Nigeria state, he, he, he has what it takes. All we need, those of us that are from his area, is to kind of make sure that he brings that capacity to bear in the larger interest of the generality of the people hmm. and not to benefit him alone as individual. And that, you know, make, and, and that makes me curious. Talking about power, how is this power being wielded? In whose favor is this power working? Is he wielding this power in favor of Ikorek Bene people or is it for personal gain? Because from what you're telling me, it looks like, oh, he's got all the power, but what is it translating to for the people? And why should... I, I'll, 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 tell you, I'll tell you two things. I will repeat what I've said for the third time. Akpabio and I are like Tom and Jerry. I believe that there's so much he could do which have not been done. But there's a saying in our language which says, I will go which means to kill the hero and you regret the day you need him. Akpabio, I believe, is a vehicle that is kept for a certain day. Maybe he was made for a day like this. I don't know, that's my thinking, but it's curious that I'm the one saying this. Hmm. Because me and Akpabio, we are Tom and Jerry, we fight all the time. But I have a lot of respect for him, I would say so. And besides, I think he's being disqualified, as it were. I have a candidate that is running for the Senate position. And if at the end of the day, he, 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 he is off, I think we will be the prime beneficiary because the ADC candidate happens to be his friend and somebody that he would rather throw his weight behind. And so, while on one hand, I'm like, um, well, 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 he's good. On the other hand, I'm like, Lord, should he come to me, Liz? I'm the primary beneficiary. So, any which way, I think that the larger interest of the state and our people, the generality of our people, is what appeals to be more and not what benefits me or my party as an individual. And besides, I'm brought to this platform not as an ADC member, but as a proper public affairs commentator. So my, 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 my comment must be seen to be non-partisan and relatively objective. Relatively objective. 
Ah, interesting. <laughs> Back to you, Puna, but I know where that latter is coming from. But let's talk about party politics now. Uh, Akwabio is a member of the APC, and we know that as we speak right now, the APC in, in Akwabom State is divided. There are factions within the party. But then, of course, um, uh, the uh, party had said that no, ma no matter what INEC's stance is on, don't forget, INEC, as we all know, is an authority when it comes to electioneering and the processes that are involved in it. Uh, well, the APC is saying that no matter what the stance is, Akwabi will be elected senator come 2023. Let's go back to violating the Electoral Act and parties doing whatever they like. Should INEC not be the ones on the chopping board right now, being that they had allowed a lot of these things to scale through and now left it over to the courts to do it? Again, could, it, could we also be wrong for insinuating that this might have been INEC's job and they derelicted that duty, as opposed to the fact that, you know, in Nigeria, when it comes to electoral issues, the courts are the ones who, you know, have jurisprudence. And again, does it not necessarily have like a, an after effect or an aftermath on our processes? The question is multi faceted. So, similar to what, what we all do outside, let's put it. First things first, are we, uh, should yeah. INEC not be, have been the first in the place of dealing with this issue for it to not have gotten to this point? Again, should INEC still not be the ones dealing with this issue as opposed to the courts? And then I'm bringing the courts in. We always leave these cases for the court, hence why our electoral calendar is the way it is. Well, when they, when, when, whenever there are disputes, I mean, it is the right of the disputers to go to court, and it is the most uh, civilized thing to do, especially when uh, accommodations could not be reached. And in situations like this, definitely you don't expect any compromise from the uh, disputers. It's, it's not possible. And so, uh, even if INEC takes a position, any party will even go to court, because the court will definitely have the final say. So what I did is okay, but for the party to say that really, really, um, a party was going to represent them, I mean, it is, I think, an objective to itself, the past, it doesn't matter. Because whatever the court says is what we will be, and in fact, it's what I will follow. That is the truth. And where I declare as a candidate is the candidate, because it is I that will conduct the elections. So where how are you going to declare a party? The candidate I never says is not the candidate. I got it. In fact, his name will not even be on the ballot to start it if it's not the candidate. What well, the court says that they'll just delete it. Mm. They'll delete it. So how are you going to how, how, how are you going to vote for him? And if they go ahead to vote, and if they don't even vote for the other party, then it simply means APC will not have a candidate, a senatorial candidate in the forthcoming general election. It's as simple as that. So the APC cannot arrogate to say the power that it doesn't have. They should pray. That the Supreme Court decides otherwise. Mm. If the Supreme Court will uphold the judgment of the Court of Appeal, of the Court of Appeal that is final. There is nothing they can do. And just like even a party himself, who is the lawyer, who is the Minister in Temple of Justice, rightly said, he told his supporters, he enjoined them, he said, be calm, still go ahead with your campaign. Of course, probably these are rhetorics in order not to dampen the spirit of his follower. But that's why they said that. He said, go ahead with your, with your campaign. Be calm. Let us wait for the Supreme Court judgment. My lawyers are vested with judgment and they'll come up with a position. Akpavia himself knows, he's a lawyer. When he says his lawyers are vested, that he's not going to resign everything to them because he's the only lawyer. So he knows. Probably what they're trying to say, do we need to go? And I will even advise Akpavia to go to the Supreme Court. You know why? For twin reasons. The first one is that there will be, it will be a case of rest judicata. There will be a final nail on that copy. You are not going to have such matters again in court because all you need to do is act in reliance upon the judgment of the Supreme Court in subsequent issues. So you are not going to have a rehash of this kind of situation. That is number one. And number two, as a regional jurisprudence, and number two, the issue of whether who is going to represent the candidate in the fourth country and that's all would have been settled. That is this, for these two reasons. I want I want I want it to go to the Supreme Court. I don't want to uh, uh, preempt what the Supreme Court will say, but I think I can conjecture what the judgment will be. Although our courts cannot be trusted, I say that with all amount of modesty. We can't really trust our courts because judgments are not procured. Judgments are procured in this country. But because it is the Supreme Court, 
probably we are going to get uh, sarcastic my people. Probably because of the support. But the support that have to have failed have failed Nigerians on so many occasions, including the Imo State case and uh, the former case of River State in 2007 and so on. So the Supreme Court has, has failed Nigerians on several occasions. But having said this, the APC cannot say willy nilly really, really, a party will be on that ballot. Okay. Um, let me come back to you, Yetok. I think that um, Funabo has frozen. Um, talking about our judiciary here, I want to make it front and center. Let's examine the role of the judiciary in our electoral process and, and how well they've done. Now, we're going to an election that, as usual, when it comes to this time, we hear rhetorics like, oh, this is a make or ma. This is the one that's going to change the entirety of Nigeria's future, etc., etc." I'm sure that you've heard all that, and maybe you're one of those who was throwing that around. But how well has the judiciary helped our electoral process? And if it hasn't, why... Uh, have we continued to go around in this circle, so if there be any circle? Mr. Yaito, can you hear me? I hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. Good. I was in the airport and um, trying to board a flight when, you know, at the airport you hear all sorts of things. And I overheard a comment from somebody that made me feel really bad. Really, really bad concerning the judiciary. <laughs> Somebody told me a particular election, um, I hope you're still right here, okay, a particular, um, I don't want to be specific about the state or about the office, but he said, this guy is going to win at the lower court, he's going to win at the, you know, court of appeal, but he's going to lose a particular case, not a previous case, he's going to lose at the Supreme Court. And the other guy asked him, why are you so... He said, because I was unfortunate enough to overhear a judge say that there is no medal for giving the right judgment, that this is their own time to get their own bite on the pie, that the Supreme Court, they are on the retirement so they can afford to close their eye to justice and make sure that the right thing is done. But that at this hour level, there is no medal for giving the right judgment. So what do they do? They go for the highest bidder. Hmm. Now, such, such, I was, I felt really depressed for a long hmm. time. And why I felt depressed was because if you really look at the fact of the case, there seem to be some iota of, if I may call it an iota, a, 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 a reasonable substance of truth. Because some of these judgments are just, to me as a layman, as an architect who just reads the <coughs> law, understand me, looking at the interpretation <coughs> of the judgment, they just don't, I just don't get it at all. So coming back to where we are, Are you still there? Are you still there? <coughs> Excuse me. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. I don't know. I don't know where you lost me. Yes, I lost you for a second. You said coming back to where we are. Yes. In a quiet bomb state, for instance, we have four main parties. And you can see this other one is like um, there's the PDP. They have a major case in court. Seriously. There's NNPP and YPP. Now, when you look at the current electoral act and whether you can buy two forms, those two people bought two forms, how it ends up, it doesn't end up, I don't know. And then there's ADC where I'm involved. Now, this man here is, is an APC who is, as of today, not there on the ballot. But they are hoping they can get on the ballot. But when you look at it, I seem to be the only person that has no skeletons, no issues. I went through the primaries. I was alone and then came up. So no case in court, no issues with the Electoral Act. So that if care is not taken, it might just come to a situation where I'm probably the only person on the ballot, on the major you know, contenders. And um, 
So testing out the electoral act and coming to resolve the issue of buying two forms or not buying two forms, placeholders or no placeholders, the moment the Supreme Court gives final judgment on those cases and they are not wanting to be politically correct, but they interpret the law, not minding whose ox is God at this point, I think that we will start to have an extremely sane electoral process going forward. I just pray that God will give our judges, particularly the Supreme Court level, that, that, that presence of mind and that nationalistic instinct to stand on the side of what justice and not wanting to be politically correct. Okay. Uh, finally, Oponabo, before we go, um, whatever the, the, the Supreme Court judgment turns out to be, and we're not trying to preempt it, um, what do you think this would do to those who think that they can, you know, subvert the system, especially the Electoral Act, as amended? Um, that feeling will also be consequent upon the judgment itself. If, for example, the judgment is uh, in sync with the strict interpretation of the Electoral Act, of course, it will serve as a lesson to Nigerians that uh, nobody's above the law. So, in future elections, Nigerians, politicians are going to study the Electoral Act to ensure that there are no infractions because they will be disqualified eventually. Mm. But if the judgment is the other way around, if the, if the rule of law is, uh, if, the, if, if it's ju justice is subverted, so to speak, then it's going to also serve as an encouragement to politicians that, yes, it depends on your weight, it depends on your gravity. If you have that cloud, I mean, you can get away with anything. And that will make nonsense of our electoral act and also nonsense of our laws. Because the law will now be meant for just the person who does not have the cloud. Once you attain a particular status in the society, you attain a particular height in the society, of course, you are now bigger than the law. The law doesn't apply to you. And that will be a wrong precedent, completely wrong precedent. Because if today you interpret the law, strictly censor, in favor of Mr. A, and tomorrow it is not in favor of Mr. B, like the Supreme Court has done in some cases in the past, then you are also going to cause some form of confusion. Because which judgment will the lower courts rely on? Which judgment? And that is where you have conflicting judgments. That is where you have the confusion. Which, and the Supreme Court, what the Supreme Court do? You eventually go to the Supreme Court. Then the Supreme Court, in trying to redeem its image, will not come up with another judgment that you have three conflicting judgments from the Supreme mm -hmm. Court. Is that not an accusation? That is pushing to Well, Because then Mr. Ray said, ah, the judgment is in my favor. Mr. B said the judgment is in my favor. And they all go there. What happens? If I said they are not going to recognize it, they, will, they all have judgments in their favor. So what do you do? That is anarchy. So the Supreme Court will first and foremost, like my brother rightly said, first and foremost be nationalistic. It, the justices must be patriotic. They must consider first and foremost the interest of the nation, the peace and stability of this nation in deciding, not minding whose ox is God. Okay. That is what we expect. So on that day, whatever the judgment is given, I just pray that it's going to be in line. Whether the electoral act is legitimate or not, I'm not. I'm not talking about legal. I'm talking about legitimacy and non legality. Whether the electoral act is legitimate or not is immaterial. For now, it is the act, yes. and we expect the Supreme Court's judgment to be in strict consonance with that electoral act. All right. Well, I want to say thank you, gentlemen. What um, happens at the end of the day remains to be seen. But Punaboy Kotara is a civil rights advocate and Ezekiel Nyaitog is a public affairs analyst and the governorship candidate of the ADC in Akwaibom State. Always a pleasure, gentlemen. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right. Well, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we get back, we'll be discussing the worsening food and energy prices in Nigeria. And what's the hope for the average Nigerian state of us?